Happy 2018, everyone. Oh my gosh. I It feels like I, it's been so long since I recorded this podcast, which <laughs> is the Bookish Stitcher podcast. And um, yeah, I totally forgot to do my intro there. And my name is Jeanette, and you can find me on all the places like Ravelry and Goodreads, and Instagram is Bookish Stitcher. That's all one word. But yeah, it has been a whirlwind and it is now 2018 and I am so happy. I am one of those people who really loves like the idea of the new year and the starting fresh and it's it's just, it feels like everything is full of possibilities right now so it's wonderful. And I have not talked to you at uh, drinks of tea. My whole family's kind of got a cold. I have not talked to you in a month. I tried to record at my normal December, like mid-December thing. Well, I did record it. <laughs> I turned on the phone and I sat down and I recorded the entire podcast. It was like the last day I had that I could do it and I only had a small time frame. And then I went to go turn it off and realized that it had stopped recording like six minutes in. So I just had a little bit of an opening and then the rest of the podcast was gone. So, oh, there's some beautiful birds outside singing. So I hope you guys, if you can hear that, I hope you enjoy it in the background. He's a very plump, happy winter bird. It's today it is, it's like 25 degrees Fahrenheit out cold outside, which feels kind of funny because December, like I was saying, has just been a mad month and we have actually just come back from Michigan where it was super cold. So it feels like we've brought some Michigan back with us, but it's just been crazy. I, I don't know if some of you might follow me on Instagram, I had a story up there, but there was ice, it snowed in San Antonio, like three or four inches, which never has happened in the area, southern area of Texas that I live in, that as far as I can remember. And it was beautiful and it was fun and we were so excited. And then the next day, my husband was going to work and there was a giant car like crash on one of the exit ramps because it was slick and because the roads were icy and there, his car was totaled. And we got the accident report a little bit before we left for Michigan and there were 29 vehicles involved in this accident. They need to just shut the city down when it uh, there is ice because San Antonio has no idea and the roads are icy because we don't have, a, there's no salting equipment. You wouldn't, you use it once, what, every decade? So that would be ridiculous to have expensive equipment for, one, for once a decade. but and we just need to shut the city down. But yeah, so my husband totaled his car and that just caused me, as you could probably imagine, the craziest amount of stress. So I was doing Vlogmas and I was having so much fun with it and loving it and then that happened and I just, I kind of just shut down everything. Like, I didn't do any more Vlogmas and it was just stress, it was, it was really stressful because our insurance did not want to give us any money for his car because it was old but it was like, a really reliable car that we felt could have gone for like another five years and because it was a Honda and they're known for people can just drive them to like 400,000 miles but they're like oh it's old and it's got a lot of mileage so you get two dollars for your car which is not quite what they gave us but not much more they didn't give us enough to get a working vehicle basically so yeah it's just that was crazy and then we went up to Michigan for Christmas and we didn't fly because plane tickets were $800 per person and we cannot afford that. So I drove, or we drove up to Michigan. I did most of the driving because, you know, my husband's still a little bit nervous after, you know, when you get in a major accident. You kind of, he was okay, by the way, he was fine. But um, the car was totaled. But after you get in an accident, as you, you know, you don't feel much like driving. So we drove up there, it took three days driving to get there and three days driving to get back. So I got through a ton of audiobooks, but not really any knitting because there aren't self-driving cars yet. But it was just the most, for those of you that live where there's snow, I'm sure it gets annoying to you, but driving through those highways that are kind of not, there's like almost empty highways where there are not many cars on them in the snow, especially when we got into Michigan, it was just the most picturesque, beautiful, calming, thing to drive through. I just felt such peace within myself and just such beauty at the silent quietness of nature in the winter and it was just wonderful. Now driving through Arkansas 
was kind of crazy because it was pouring so hard I couldn't see the front of my car and we were completely safe my mom was texting all the time and she had so many people praying for us you know to get there safely and, um, but I couldn't see past the front of the car it was very stressful and there were so many wrecks it just took us a day to get through Arkansas I felt like I was in a Doctor Who episode where we, you're never leaving Arkansas again so it just took us a much longer time to get there and to get back than we had anticipated but we kind of made a fun time of it and you know just listen to audiobooks and the kids my daughter colored and my son read and played games and stuff so it was it was fun and car trip was it was nice to get to see certain areas and stuff as we drove through it the country is very different in parts and my husband also got car sick for a little bit so I did drive most of that and then while we were in Michigan we played in the snow we went to there was they got snowed in pretty fast but there was only something like the things that were really near to them was a bookstore which was like six or seven minutes away and that's driving like super slow in the snow so we went to Schuler's bookstore which is amazing if you were ever in Grand Rapids Michigan and then we went to this place called real food for breakfast but the rest of the time we stayed in a house of my husband's it's like his second cousin removed or something but they just call her his aunt and um so it was a free house that we had there in michigan and grand rapids and it was lovely and the kids played in the snow until we all got colds but they were just in heaven you, you could not believe two kids happier at the snow and it i i got my white christmas which was just so beautiful and so wonderful but the only sad thing is that they didn't have like a television and while we are not TV people like if you when people talk about oh I love this television show I have no idea but we are movie people we I'm always I love film and I even from like the 1890s like a century ago or more than a century ago up till now I love film and we normally have a tradition of watching a whole bunch of Christmas movies and I get to knit and watch Christmas movies but there was no TV and except for like a little tiny one in the kitchen that I guess they used for like watching while they cook or something but uh, so we didn't which didn't have a DVD player so we didn't get to watch Christmas movies and I didn't get to knit to that so it was kind of odd but we were out playing in the snow a lot and then we were like laying down blowing our noses <laughs> so enough of all that you guys came here to see the knitting I just wanted to fill you in really quickly on where I was for a month for anybody that is still watching <laughs> after me being gone for forever. I do have a finished object and I had this last time to show my voice is all funny. It's just like an extra comical bit. But I had this finished last time, so it's been done for a while, but this is the Dragon's Teeth hat by Knitting Expat Design, knit out of some Neely's knits and it's for my daughter. I left a really long tail because I like to use the tail from the actual hat to help anchor in the pom-pom because there are these strings from the pom-pom which is great and all but I like it to be anchored to the actual hat and I will probably wrap it around and then put a button to secure it but that's going to be a hat for my daughter and the colorway of this is the Luna colorway and it's just really fun because we've been watching Harry Potter movies because they have like uh, Harry Potter weekend on one of the things when we we're at a hotel staying for the night so yeah that is my finished object and then I worked a little bit on this it's to the point where it needs the ribbing this is my son's and this is in a Casey's pocket to go bag this is my son's card oh I haven't even joined the new skein so here's the new skein it's kind of gotten all crazy in the back <laughs> but this is some of my yarn open skies yarn in the titanic colorway and i have knit the body except for the ribbing and it's kind of curling up on itself but you can see and then it'll have two to three inches of ribbing depending on how long he wants it and then i'm going to just break this into two halves and knit the sleeves as far as I can and then I will get a corresponding darker blue finish off the sleeves and do the hood and this is the Nate's hoodie and I'm knitting it with some of my driftwood fixed circulars and I I just love these needles so much they're probably my favorite needles because they're just pretty and I really enjoy wooden needles I I used to love metal I used to like be all about the speed 
but now I just really want to enjoy the process. And so I love my driftwood because they are, they do glide really well. They're not, you know, to where it's sticking or stuff like that. And then, oh, I forgot to mention, I am wearing a sweater that I knit. As you can probably tell, this is the, or that it's a hand knit sweater. This is the Hero sweater. And it's knit out of some Spot and Chloe in their wool cotton blend. And it's super thick and warm. And I, I like this sweater. I don't wear it a ton. Uh, it's weird, I almost feel like it's too nice to wear a lot, which is ridiculous. But yeah, it's, it's one that I knit a little while ago. and. I like it, it's, it's pretty. And I decided to wear it today because what better chance to wear knitwear than when it's freezing outside and you're filming a knitting podcast. And I, the kids and I brought a whole bunch of knitwear up to Michigan, which made me realize how much people that live in the colder climates, you get to wear your knitwear all the time. It's not like, you know, four or five days a year. It's like six months of the year. <laughs> Cause there were days in Michigan where it got to like negative on the wind chill and <laughs> my son was getting ready to go out in the snow one day and my in-laws were trying to tell him it's it's negative on the wind chill it's like negative six out there which apparently could like freeze you right away if you go out but he went out for a second and he came back and he was like it's really cold and windy out there <laughs> and you people who live in the north they were probably like yes yes it's 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 funny oh the tea is so good and it's a Ginny the potter bug my dinosaur has a scarf. And then next thing, I didn't bring everything that I worked on, but I just brought a couple major things. This is in a fat squirrel fiber bag. This is my garter goodness shawl. And I am on the final color. I can't even show this to you because it is that big. I hoped, I think if I hadn't had to drive the vast majority of the road trip, I could have finished this. But you know that for safety reasons and because he was feeling sick, I did just drive a lot. Um, but yeah, I am so excited that this will be done, and it will take less than a year because I cast this on in February of last year, and it is almost 1,800 yards. I think like it's definitely over 1,600, maybe 17 something, but and it's upside down, of course. I'm showing you, but. This color that I added in, I'm a few rows into it, is the Hedgehog Fibers in the Hurricane. And it's so dark that you probably won't be able to see, but I shall describe it to you. It is deep br chocolate browns with midnight blue and then hints of plummy purple. And there are bits that look like it didn't take the dye much, so there are like lighter brown bits and stuff like that, almost. A, and instead of like the really deep midnighty royal blue or there are bits that are like a steely gray blue and it's weird I haven't knit with hedgehog fibers in a while but I remember it being super soft and my skein isn't particularly soft so I may have gotten a different like a, um, a skein it feels almost a little you know when the yarn has been felted and it's kind of hard to pull it off the skein it may ju just be that it's really old I don't know but it's not that old it's like two years old it's not really old it depends on what knitter you talk to, right? Some knitters might be like, whoa, that's really old, and others might be, no, I have yarn in my stash from before I was born, before the 80s, which was when I was born. <laughs> but yeah, so this is coming along, and I'll be excited when it's done. It will be like a giant shawl that may be taller. I'm excited to see when it's finished, if it's bigger than my queen size bedspread. And then the final project is a new one that you haven't seen, and it is in a Blinger string bag. I, I haven't replaced the Christmas bags yet, but this is the Sabago Cove sweater by Alicia Plummer. It is a top-down raglan. It is for my daughter, and it takes advantage of, in the picture at least, or in the pattern, using three colors and having color blocks that increase down to make a tunic. I actually showed me winding this yarn in one of my vlogmas picture uh, videos. This is the first color I'm using is some Lone Star Arts in the vintage colorway. My friend Amanda Amanda dyes this uh, yarn and she's super sweet and I'm excited to be using it because it's gorgeous. So 
it's just so pretty and there's so many there's such a depth of color in here and I am about to the point where I shall be dividing for the sleeves I'm making it a little bit bigger I think I'm doing my daughter will be six soon I think or in March I think I am doing this six to seven size or the seven year old size just because then she can wear it for longer and I want to use up all the yarn or as much of it as I can so here's that little outfit for her or a little top for her because she just loves like that whale one that I knit her that is cream with the whale button she wore that a lot on vacation and people were saying how cute it was so this is another I really like knitting things for them because my kids because they enjoy it so much. My daughter took a while to come around to the knitting thing, but my sons always loved it. So that's all the whips that I brought down to show you. I didn't bring any spinning down. Um, I completely failed on my spin the bin where I wanted to like spin a certain number of braids. And I'll have to go back and see like if I said that if I didn't spin those that I would give them away. So I'll have to go back and check on that on my Instagram post. But I have been thinking and planning ahead for 2018. And I actually heard on a podcast that I listened to on the way back or the way up to Michigan about as the happier podcast. And it was about, I listened to so many podcasts. Most of them aren't knitting related. There's philosophy ones, there's science ones, there's literature ones, there's a lot of linguistic ones. And there's some like psychology ones and I don't know if the happier one would kind of fall under pop psych but it says somebody had the idea on there to do 18 things in 2018 so we are going to have uh, or I'm going to do it and I'll put a thread up in the group if you would like to join me uh, for the bookish teacher podcast group on Ravelry a 2018 knit along so what it's gonna be is 18 things and I will post a thread up and it'll be like 18 in 2018 so you can post your list of 18 things that you would like to do craft-wise in 2018. It can be learn a new skill, take a craftsy class, knit up a bunch of scraps, um, knit your oldest yarns, knit, finish your oldest whip, anything. One of my 2018 goals is going to be do the Desert Vista Dye Works annual, fourth annual sock yarn club. And this is my first color I'm going to do and it's Zambadi, it's cold outside because somebody it is cold outside everybody if you're in Texas right now it's cold outside it was even kind of snowing and ice Ugh. Um, just a little bit ago so this is gonna be my first cast on I'm going to do it and this is gonna be my main goal of the year is these socks once these socks are done then other stuff can come into play and I kind of have an idea of what the other stuff that I want to be doing but I really want to knit a whole bunch of socks for my son and for my daughter. But for my daughter, I think I'm going to knit bigger sizes so she can have them as like maybe a Christmas present. I'll give her a whole bunch of socks. My son already has bigger feet than me, which we found when we had to buy him new shoes. <laughs> he had to get bigger shoes than I wear. But this will be getting cast on today. I'll try to maybe watch a movie. My in-laws gave me a DVD collection set of some Alfred Hitchcock films oh, it's like his criterion collection or something or time warner movie classic it's one of i love films like i said and hitchcock his films are brilliant and i will probably knit these to one of the my favorite hitchcock is spellbound but you can't find that dvd anywhere sadly but i also love vertigo and all the other kind of classics and it's just oh i love his films it's, they're so well done so these will be knit to a Hitchcock film later on on New Year's Day and uh, yeah so other 18 things because it's 2018 that's one of mine you know some of them maybe some of your 18 things may be things that will take you all year like this I won't get to mark that as completed till I finish my December pair but other things like take a craftsy class or learn a new skill or finish your oldest whip those can be done whenever they're done so in the thread the idea is you'll post your 18 things and then every time you complete one, they, you don't have to complete them in order. I don't care about that. But like, let's say your third thing is finish your three color cashmere shawl. I have one of those on the needles. Let's say that's your third thing. 
and then whenever you finish it you can do another post in the thread like finish number three my color cashmere shawl and if you want to take a picture that's fine if you don't it doesn't matter we would love to I would love to like see gorgeous pictures of things and then what I'm thinking is I'll have uh, quarterly prizes every three months we'll do a drawing and then at the end of the year everybody that has finished all of their 18 I will put into a pot and we'll have a big huge grand prize so I think that will be fun and I think it will be motivating for all of us to finish our 18 things and yeah it can be you know if you're doing something for another group like a sock knit along or a sweater knit along whatever you could put that in your 18 things like my goal is to knit a sweater it could be crossing I don't that's totally fine and um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Another of my 18 goals is gonna be to knit some stuff out of my pattern library. I have a bunch of patterns on Ravelry that I've been wanting to knit that were either gifted to me or that I bought and they're sitting in there and I'm going to knit some of them. I think I'm gonna try to knit one a month, like one hat a month from my pattern library or a shawl or just one thing from there. So that's gonna be another one of my 18 things that I think I will actually open up a separate thread for that called knit your library where every month you can pick and that'll be less formal and just like post whenever and maybe I'll draw some pattern prizes out of there occasionally but yeah I thought that would be fun and I am I'm excited for it but I'm always excited for everything at the new year I I am like that kid every holiday I love I get excited over small tiny things this weird mix of getting excited like a little three-year-old or five-year-old about stuff and then also really loving to have serious discussions about history and all kinds of things so just a, an oddball person and i think that is everything that i wanted to mention for knitting and for uh the stuff for the group thread now on to the book so this is a book that I've been reading for a little over a month. It's, it was on my to be read list since 2013. And I was making sure this year that I read all my books from 2013 so that, that I put on there that year. So kind of making sure I get to those older books that I really wanted to read instead of just reading new things. And this is very funny because this man could be twins with my father, Jim Henson. And it just, there are pictures of my dad and they look, I showed my dad this and he was like, whoa, because yeah. And my sister, her mother-in-law, I believe, recently did a, um, like a family tree of one of those. And I had mentioned to her that he looks a lot like my dad. And she found out that we are somehow like, I didn't ask her specifics, but like so-and-so many removed cousins from Jem Henson. And cause he had some family in Oklahoma too at one point, I believe. And, it's just fascinating. So I got this. I was never a huge, huge Muppet fan. I loved Sesame Street as a kid. I did not watch the Muppet show. I remember Muppets Take Manhattan with the somebody's getting married. <laughs> and um, so I remember that one. But I loved, I kind of loved the Dark Crystal. I really loved Labyrinth. And that was just like, oh, that film still is one of my favorites with David Bowie. And he did that and so it's just a portrait of his life and it was so funny while I was reading this there were parts where I did not like Jim Henson he he probably he was not probably he was not a good husband to his wife Jane and um, it's this very oxymoron thing of this super quiet guy who never liked conflict but yet liked fast things and liked to always be exploring and doing new things and there was a certain part where I was reading this where, um, and I don't think this is any like giveaway, but he had affairs and he got mad that it got put out in public that one of his affairs, it was like the first time his affair had ever been like made public scandal wise. And he was mad because that wasn't the image that he wanted to portray, that he wanted out there for himself. And I get so mad at the, if you want there to be an image of you out there, be the image. If you want an image of being a good family man who is a loving husband and loving kids, be that. If you want an image of being somebody who is kind and, and sweet, be that. And I understand we all can't be perfect all the time, but like 
there are some slip ups that are a lot bigger than others, right? Like occasionally being in a car, I have times all the time where I'm in the car and somebody will cut me off and I get really upset and, I, and I'm like honking my horn or something. And I try to be kind about that, but there, I'm not perfect, right? You can't always be perfect, but there are other things like that are, that are bigger that I feel like, you know, if you wanna be seen as a good husband, maybe don't cheat on your wife. But anyways, so I was going through the I was going through the gauntlet with this book. I loved him, I hated him, and then by the end I was sobbing and I was like, oh Jim Henson, why? Oh, he's such a beautiful soul. And um, so, needless to say, Brian J. Jones did a great job with this because I I felt like I now know so much more about the Muppets and Sesame Street and all just all of Jim Jim Henson's life stuff. And it was neat because before we left for Michigan, we were having family movie night and we watched the Muppets Christmas Carol and it had the credits about who had done what. And I was like, I know him. I remember reading about him in the book. Oh, I know him. And so it's a neat tie in to have, sorry, I'm going to cough. You can hear my heater trying to keep the house above freezing. It's, it's cold um, and the heater is not liking it, <laughs> but it's neat seeing these names on the screen of the film and recognizing and knowing personal history bits about them because I had read this biography. So I'm really glad I read it. It is a doorstopper. It's over 600 pages. A lot of that is notes though. It's almost 600 pages, but it's well done. And it, it's really sad the way that he died. Um, yeah, I, I was crying, but I cry easily. Uh, I am a highly sensitive person. So yeah, and it has some pictures and stuff, but it really is a good story. So if you are a lover of Jim Henson, Sesame Street, The Muppets, Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, anything like that, I think that this would be a book that you would definitely enjoy. And I'm sure you could maybe get it from the library or a used bookstore even, because it has been out, like I said, for a while. And, and I got it in paperback form. But yeah, I am so excited to read some more biographies. This really made me want to read more. I don't have a bunch in my to be read list, but I'm going to try to remedy that. I've been making my Goodreads challenge for this next year and I wanna read a whole bunch of, I'm gonna be going back to school for being a librarian and I would really like to focus on a youth librarian track because I love children and I love being goofy and I just love discussing books with kids because they have such interesting perspectives and it just warms my heart and makes me smile. So I'm gonna be reading a whole bunch of, you know, middle grade books this year and middle grade graphic novels and all kinds of fun stuff. So I set myself a pretty big Goodreads reading challenge on there. And if you're on Goodreads, I'd love to know your challenge. If you're, you know, trying to read more, trying to read less, and just what kind of books that you like to read because I'm excited 2018 it's a new year it's full of possibilities I you know my husband and I are talking about what we want our words of the year to be and just I get to do 18 things for knitting but my, my husband and I also decided we were going to do 18 life things and have a list and just kind of some of them fun stuff that we want to do and then some of them harder stuff that we need to do. One of the fun things, my brother is engaged and he's gonna be getting married and his wife is from Mexico and she wants to get married in Mexico. So we're gonna be planning a trip down there. But yeah, that is everything I have and I'm just blabbering on to you now. I should let you go and you can knit or read or take a nap in this wonderful cold weather if it's cold where you are or go play in the snow or whatever you want to do, watch a good movie. I am going to go watch a Hitchcock film and knit these socks. I'm gonna to try to make a goal every day to knit a certain amount. That's gonna be my main focus, what I really want to accomplish. And yeah, until I talk to you guys next time, I hope you have a wonderful couple of weeks and you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye guys.